Please repeat after me. Asatoma Sadgamaya. Asatoma Sadgamaya. Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya. Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya. Mrityama Amritam Gamaya. Sarvesham Swasti Bhavatu. Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. Sarve Bhavantu Sukinaha. Sarve Santu Niramaya. Sarve Badrani Pashantu. Sarve Badrani Pashantu. Om Triambakam Yajamahe. Sugandim Pushti Vadanam. Bargo Devas Adimahi. I mean, Hova Rukamiva Vandanam. Mirtya Mokshiya Mam Ratat. All together. Om Bur Bovaswaha. Tatsavitu Varenyam. Bargo Devas Yadimahi. Dio Yona Pachodayat. Om Shanti 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 Om. So I'm recording, so the questions after. Okay, today's topic is Tat Twam Asi. I am that. Ah, ah. <laughs> So, are we created in the image of God? Every religion says so. So, that means that the divine energy resides within everything and everybody, including us. Everybody says so. They say God is omnipresent, right? So it's in you. Uh, oh. What we call that energy is a fragment of the divine. And that fragment is our I am presence, our spirit. Okay. And it is pure and perfect. And that I am presence is directly connected to the source. And that I am presence is part of our being. It's not removed. It's always with us. It never separates. Okay. Our senses of our sense of limitation, which we have, have we have created. We are not limited. We have created the limitation. Believe it or not. All right. Our own human consciousness, our senses that are less than the highest quality of our true self. Our higher selves, or higher mental body, or inner guru or inner heart leads us back to the true self, our immortal self. So that's very important to understand. You are never alone. You always have your higher self with you. Okay? And there's always, always, always a connection between you and your I am presence. Now, <clears throat> And it's a crystal cord. It's a shaft of light. Some people say it's a silver cord connecting us. When you see saints illustrated in pictures, they have a halo. Or when you see Buddha, he's got this big head. The connection is supposed to be this big between our higher selves and us. That means we're totally connected. 
But because we haven't used it, it has atrophied into a small cord. Every time you meditate, you actually go through that. And the more you go through it, the wider it will get. Very simple. Very simple. Okay? And the more you will be connected to your higher self. Now, your higher self is not your incarnated soul, which is very here. The incarnated soul is very close to you. And the Holy Spirit of that incarnated soul is very close to you. We're talking about your higher self, your I am presence. And that I am presence is constantly connected. And believe it or not, it can never be extinguished. It can never be taken away from you. You cannot sever that cord. Okay? Even when you pass away, you can't sever that cord. Your physical body goes, but that cord does not. All right? And it is, it's a lifeline. It ties us to our spirit. And that cord, that I am presence, filters into the heart center. And what is in the heart center? The three beautiful threefold flame of the heart center, which I have spoken about. Divine will, divine wisdom, divine love. It all resides in here. But, as I said, we have atrophied. So the divine will, the divine love, and everything is not flowing in there at 100%. It's coming in, trickling in, because we haven't used our higher selves. Every single human has an absolute desire to go back to the source. You are never, ever going to be satisfied with what you have. Know that. That's already set in. Uh, no matter how much you want to complain to the Lord, no matter how much you love the Lord or you don't love the Lord, you're never going to be satisfied with what you can get on this earth. Because there's an innate desire to go back to the source. And unless that is fulfilled, there will be always a lack. You will feel a lack. But when you meditate, you open that channel. Now, your physical body is supposed to be here to explore and create. That's the purpose of incarnating. All right? We can create because we have a divine, we have a fragment of that divine energy. That divine energy we call the creator, whatever that energy is, whoever that creator is, we don't know. We call him this, we call him that, but who knows? Have you ever met the creator? I haven't. <laughs> okay. Okay. But I have met the energy of creation. Aha. We have met the energy of creation. We have met that love. We have met that all of that. All right. We always wish to achieve what we call Christ consciousness, liberation, self-realization, nirvana, whatever you want to call it. It's always there. That, that is what pushes us forward. All right. Now, we are supposed to enjoy here Explore our creative talents, our inner gifts. We're not supposed to suffer. Did you hear that? <laughs> In the present state, we have also created suffering. Because it's of our, our ignorance that we don't know I am that. Now, when you got that creative power, nobody said you had to use it only for good. That was up to you. It was called free will. Where you, where you want to use the creative power. We have created a lot of evil. Okay? We can see that. We can either create heaven on earth or we can create hell on earth. It's up to you. Our... 
thoughts, our actions, create our destiny. All right? It's that simple. We talked about it many times, and I'm going to keep talking about it because we really don't realize it. We have so much energy, and we have such an abundant amount of energy, when you really think about it, that uh, to create. So whatever we create in our mind, it takes your mind to walk forward, okay? Your mind says, I'm going to walk over there, and then you, your body has the energy. Your mind says this, the body has the energy. Your mind says, I want to call somebody, and they kind of know you're calling. The energy travels. You know, you have all of that. We don't use it. So it's atrophied. But we need to go back and have developed that. Because our unconscious, conscious, unconscious, and superconscious mind are all developed. We came here pure. We were very pure. Then we started eating the apple. We were all pure, remember? Yeah, Garden of Eden. And then we ate the apple of creation, and we created for ourselves, rather than just enjoying and creating for everybody. Now, every one of us has a tremendous power and inner gift. You did not come down here blank. You had a gift that you needed to give to this world. That gift is what your purpose is. Okay. And it is creative and it serves humanity. Now you say, well, I'm not an artist, I'm not a dancer like her. No, creativity is anything that you're doing. In order to work on the computer, you have, your mind has to be creative. In order to construct a building, the mind, the architect has to be creative. Everything, create, every choice you make, everything is creative. Don't think you just have to, but you develop the ability to create and to be creative through the arts. This is why it's good to have the arts when you're a child, because you know. But when you took the shop, when oh, in my days they gave a shop and cooking, you have to be creative. You can't do it without being creative. Everything you do is creative, can be creative. Okay? So don't say, well, I'm not creative. No, that's not true. How do all these inventions come? Okay, creative. So. So you're supposed to explore your creative talents, your inner gifts, all right? And we are not using it. We're not using it. I want you to start using it because you are that. Your vibration, your personal vibration, affects every person you meet. Simple. You go to a person's house that's depressed. How do you walk out of there? Depressed. Because that vibration is so low, it pulls you down. You try to get them to change, and you try, and they don't want to change, and they don't want to change, they don't want to change. Okay, so your, your thought process emits energy and everyone around you gets that energy. So just your existence affects everyone around you. Isn't that interesting? Don't we want to affect everybody around you positively? Yeah, all right. Now, similar energy attracts similar energy. Like the bir bird of one feather flock together or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're like magnets. We attract the same energy. So if you're depressed, you will attract people who are depressed. If you're happy and full of energy, you will attract those people. Isn't that interesting? Okay.
Now, your higher self is willing to take care of your whole, your whole life. It's willing to guide you. It's willing to make things happen in the world so that you can fulfill your destiny, your gifts, that you can use your gifts. And the more you use your gifts, the more you will get information downloaded from your higher self on where to do it, how to do it, etc. And synchronicity will start happening. The more you use your gifts, it's automatic. The Lord did not leave us alone. We have constant help if we listen. If we listen. All right. As now, here is the thing. We started having attachments. We wanted things our way. And then we started having these attachments and we start and our higher self says, well, you need to do this because you need to expire. That's your, we stopped listening because it was interfering with my attachments. That's why they say detachment is number one in your spiritual world. Because if I'm attached, I won't listen to any guidance. I want my way. My way or the highway, they say, right? Yeah, my way. So we stop listening to the nudgings of our higher selves or spirit because it may interfere with attachment. And by doing so, we allow, allow the ego body, the tool for us to use, to work and take over. In other words, we stopped listening to our higher self and we allowed ego to take over. That's because we got attached. Okay? Now, the ego, like a bully, the ego is definitely a bully, was louder and more dominant and our communication with our higher self became less and less. We all had it before, but it became less and less. After a while and many incarnations, we have lost our ability to have a direct communication. Now, you're supposed to be in direct communication with the spirit, with your, yourself with your higher self, which is directly connected to the source. You're supposed to be connected. Now, how do we get back there? We can't just open the door and walk through. That would be nice. Goodbye. One, we have to get rid of the attachments, right? Which are preventing us from getting there. Attachment is not the same as love or preferences. Attachments is different. Attachments are where, <clears throat> where you have to have it, absolutely. But we can have preferences, we can have goals, we can have loves. So don't, don't, <coughs> don't think of attachments of everything, okay? Be sure that you understand the difference. Attachment means it has to be this way. I will not, it must be this way, no matter what. If you have a goal or you want something, here is the simplest way of not getting attached. Because from now on, you know that attachments keep you away from talking to your higher self. You say, I have this goal. May it be for the highest good of my, may it be for the highest good for myself or anyone else in involved. That means, highest good means your, your movement towards being connected. If it doesn't interfere with that, but if the, if the job, what you want will interfere with that, it will not happen. And so then you will not have that goal 
And if you don't have the goal, you say, that's divine will. I'm not, that's not for me. But you must still work for it. Can't just go, go sit back. Okay. Yeah. I'm supposed to study. Okay. It's not happening. Oh, it's divine will. Goodbye. No. No. You have to work for it. And if after working hard, it's still not going, then it's not meant for you. All right? Now, your ego is our tool. Your ego is our tool. It's very important. The ego is very important. But we're supposed to have control over the ego. The ego now has control of us. Only when we surrender the ego, and when we talk about surrendering, when we talk bowing down, Ishva Pranidhan, we're talking about surrendering the ego. That's why people bow down or genuflex or any of those things before a deity. It's surrendering the ego, not giving, you know, not glorifying necessarily. The bowing down means surrendering the ego so that the ego does not become the dominant factor in our life. So that's the important part. All right. Now, your I am presence takes over once you surrender the ego. It will feed through you. It, you will get, they, they call it, some of people call it downloads. Some people call it, I'm channeling. You're never, very rarely are you channeling another entity. You're usually channeling your, your higher self, your I am presence where you get information that is beyond your normal understanding, okay? Now, our attachments are the most feeble attempt in gaining back our source information. And that leads to the ego taking over. And you can see what the ego has done. You can see it in the cases of greed, war, prejudice, power, hatred. Any of those are not part of you. They're part of your ego. And you need to understand that these all have one thing in common. They have a, a lack of love, which is the purest of all emotions. Now, unconditional love we're talking about. Everybody has love for money, love for this, love for that. We're talking about unconditional love, all right, that has no strings attached. And usually, this is another thing. We fall in love with people, but they have strings attached. Mataji used to call that business. I love you if you love me. If you don't love me, we get the divorce. <laughs> so that's a business, a business of love. Okay. Remember, a seed disintegrates in order to transform itself into a beautiful oak tree. Right? It's purest potential. We must disintegrate in order to become the splendor of the divine. We have to go back. We have the seed within us. We have to let it go. We have to open it up. We have to bring transformation, bring us back to purity, not to death. Physical body dies. But the minute your connection to that divine energy is not flowing fully, it's always flowing something. If it's not flowing fully, 
you're practically dead in this world. Because when that flows, Anand comes. Anand is what? Love, purity, bliss. Anand is there all the time. And we can be full of joy, full of love. We can, under, the, we can be constantly happy in this world, even though things can go wrong. People birth, people die. Things are going to go wrong, but you can still be happy. <clears throat> when I was younger, I worked in the, when I was going to college. Well, actually, last two years in high school as well. I had to work. Then I worked in a hospital because it was the evening. After a whole day of going to school, then I got to work. There were, so there was, um, I would see people that are constantly sick and pain and so forth, and yet they have a smile on the face when I came in. And then I see people with a toe hurting and they gr are grumpy. And I go, how can she be happy even though she's sick, so sick, how can she still be happy? This was my question at that time. And that's because she had that feeling of divinity within her, the feeling that she is connected to the divine. And that feeling alone, no matter what happens around you, will keep you happy inside, inside happiness, not outside happiness, inside fulfillment, feeling okay. So that you can share that. And every time I walked into her room, I came out feeling better about myself. She didn't say anything to me, but it's such a, we've sent out that vibration. It's amazing. It's totally amazing. All right? So that's very important. Now, our mind, we have to start learning what our mind is thinking and doing. Understand the emotions that are, we are emitting into the universe. Every feeling you have, every thought you have, you're sharing. You think you're by yourself. No, you're sharing that with everybody around you. Everybody. So you have to start looking. What are my thoughts? Am I attached to this? Is this holding me back? Is it worth it? Because half of our attachments are developed from habit. And they're not even worth to be attached to. We need to get rid of them. We have to start thinking, is this an attachment or is this a preference? There is things we have that are a preference, of course. I prefer certain things. I prefer wearing... A, or is it an attachment that means I really need it? I will feel uncomfortable if I don't have it. Okay. And your mind does terrible things to you. Your mind is constantly running around. The chitta, we talk about the chitta, the mind waves. What are they like? They go in circles. They're constantly repeating the same stuff over and over. It's like a broken record, and it repeats the same stuff. And the mind gets into creating situations that do not ex exist, like worrying. It does these things by itself. An idle mind is a devil's workshop. That's what my guru kept saying. And what does it talk to you about, usually? nudging us. I'm no good. I should have. Why didn't I? I not. And so on. It, does, it never says, I'm great. I'm part of the divine. I can accomplish what I need to accomplish if I work hard. Does that your mind repeat that to you? God bless you if it does. <laughs> Let it repeat that to you. Let that become the broken record. I am that. Tatwa Masi. I am that. I am that, and I can achieve, and I can serve the humanity with my gifts, and I will be 
a positive influence over everybody, and I hate nobody, and I have no, no anger towards people. Okay. Wouldn't that be nice if the mind repeated that constantly? Ah. Uh -huh. So our quest is, what is in our mind? That is our quest. And you all have studied yoga, yoga chitta dhriti nirodaha. The most important thing is to have control over the mind, because without that, you will not reach the last. Yam niyam asana pranayam tachahar dana dhyan samadhi. You can be in samadhi and be living right here. If the mind is feeling and feelings create a vibration and vibrations attack similar vibration, then you want to know that you are attracting what you're thinking. Okay? So attract wonderful things to you. So that's why we say we are the creator of our environment. We are the creator of what we think. Right now, it seems that most of the bully ego is the one that's creating. And I call the ego the bully. That's, that's exactly what he is. It takes over. It likes to be number one. And creates all these desires and attachments. Okay. So, right? So let's go and... Get the guidance of our spirit, our I am presence, which is with us all the way. How do we create that connection? By one, knowing that I am part of the source, and by meditating, which means not sitting cross-legged, but being aware of your higher self, being aware of being in the moment, controlling the thoughts, creates that vibration that opening the channel. The more you control the thoughts, the wider the channel goes. It's supposed to be this big. It's a little thin straw. It's supposed to be this big. This is why you see in the pictures, you see halos, you see all of those things in pictures. People can see the vibration around the person. It's a golden vibration around the person, and that's what they see of the saints and so forth. It's because that opening between your higher self, your individual higher self, everybody has their own, is trying to connect to you. Okay? You are that. You have that with you. You are whoever you're supposed to be, you are. You have that wonderful soul self with you. You have that wonderful higher self that's trying to communicate with you all the time. When you get that intuition, that's your gut talent, that's your higher self trying to convey. Or it can be your soul self trying to convey. All of these things, you get that intuition about people, you get the intuition, that's all part of the system. It's not the minute you take it into the brain, the ego takes over. Live by your soul, live by your higher self, live that beauty about life. And then you can really love, and then you can really enjoy, and then you can really be a service to humanity by just being you. You don't have anything great to do. You just have to be you. And wherever you walk, you make an effect, have an effect. Nobody, not everybody can be Gandhi. But everybody can be Gandhi for people around them. Not everybody can be a great achiever. But we can do what we can with our environment and the people that we know. And people will be coming to you for that purpose. So that you can serve them by just being you. So that's what my, I am that. Tatwam asi. Keep saying that to yourself. I am that. Don't repeat, I should have, I could have, and why didn't I, and I'm stupid. Those, those things don't come. 
Tattva Masi. I am that. I am a divine flame of God in the chamber of my heart. That, yeah. In the, in the Upanishads, they talk about the heart like a lotus. And in the lotus sits a little flame. And that flame is a divine flame, and everybody has it. It's there, but the lotus is closed. Once you open it, the flame comes out. And then you can, uh, and I want your flame to be wide open. Okay. So even the most evil individual has that flame. And that's why we go, namaste. I bow down to that divine within you. That divinity is within you. You are that. You have it. You are a walking divinity. You just forgot. That's all. You just forgot. And you must take it back. And you have to take it back, and you will reincarnate until you do. So you might as well just go ahead and do it now. And I shall close our lecture. Oh. Oh. Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, oh.